Dunder Mifflin, this is Pam. <laughs> Get it? Because I have a d I'm sorry. Hello, Shadi Bays. Hello, besties. Welcome to the end of the month. I don't even think I need to tell you what we're doing because you already know we do it every single month. It is reading wrap up time. I am going to be telling you every single book I read this month, whether it was paperback, Kindle, audiobook, what have you. And I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and telling you a little bit about them. No spoilers. There was something I wanted to say, but what was it? I read, I think, 19 books this month. I'm not really sure. I read a lot at the beginning of the month, and then for some reason at the end, I kind of just fell off. <laughs> Let's do this. It kind of sucks that my coffee's almost over and I'm just starting this video because I need all the energy that I can get, you know, but it's fine. Okay, so at the very beginning of the month, I read A Be Still My Heart by Emily McIntyre on my handy dandy Kindle. This book, y'all, is like a romantic suspense. Like there's romance, right? But there's also suspense and mystery. And I am obsessed with that genre that I didn't even know was really a genre, but it is. Like picture mindfuck series vibes, that kind of energy, but obviously mindfuck series is a superior. Go read that series if you haven't, search trigger warnings. Anyway, this has that energy. It is dual POV and it follows Lincoln. Loki forgot Shotty's name. <laughs> What was her name? I remember thinking about Mark from Grey's Anatomy. Why was I thinking about Mark from Grey's Anatomy? Mark Sloan. Her name's Sloan. Be Still My Heart follows Lincoln and Sloan and it is dual POV and it is set in this island called Skelm Island. It's in Maine and Lincoln is basically this fisherman, this lobster seller. <laughs> very grumpy, very hot fisherman vibes. That's Lincoln. And Sloan is a detective. And Sloan is a detective and she comes to Skelm Island where Lincoln happens to reside because there are some murders going Going on in this very small town where everybody knows each other. So Sloan is trying to figure out what's going on in this town. However, her main suspect happens to be Lincoln. I'm not going to tell you anything else about this because it's definitely one of those that the less you know the better because there are plot twists here and there and the story takes you for a ride. Search of trigger warnings for this because it is kind of like a dark romance. I really enjoyed it, okay? This is definitely a new genre that I will start to dabble in because I really, really liked the fact that I didn't know what was gonna happen next. Granted, I was a little anxious <laughs> throughout most of it. That happens to me a lot when I don't know the next move. That's why I tend to rewatch TV shows that I've already watched because I already know what's gonna happen at the end, so I don't have to be anxious about it, you know? So, this book, I definitely needed a palate cleanser after it, but I really, really liked it. I rated it a 4.25. The only reason it wasn't a five was because the romance for me wasn't the best. Like I liked Lincoln and Sloan, don't get me wrong, but I wasn't obsessed with them. I was a little more obsessed with them at the end. I came around to them, but I was more focused on the suspense and on the murder mystery than I was the romance, you know? But I still really liked it. It was a fucking great book. It just wasn't a five-star read, but 4.25 nonetheless. Then after Be Still My Heart, like I said, I needed a little palate cleanser. I needed a little cute rom-com vibe, okay? So I went for Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. And let me just tell you, this wasn't the cute rom-com I was expecting it to be. It was a lot deeper than I thought, but I loved that about it. So Part of Your World follows Daniel and Alexis, and it is dual POV. And Basically, Alexis is this hot, smart, rich doctor, lives in a big city. And Daniel, on the other hand, is like the mayor of a small town and he's a carpenter and he lives a much simpler life than Alexis does. So they are completely different people living completely different lifestyles. And one night, Alexis ends up in the small town that Daniel lives in and they have a como se dice one night stand. <laughs> and Alexis has just gotten out of a bad relationship. So she doesn't want anything serious. And Daniel happens to be 10 years younger than her and they have completely different lives. Um, Y'all. This book took me by surprise. I had not read any Abby Jimenez until this book. I will definitely be picking up her other books because I loved this. Like I mentioned, I was expecting a cute rom-com because the cover looks cute and the blurb of it looked cute. I was like, okay, this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be fresh. Why did I say fresh? <laughs> And it was fun. Don't get me wrong, it was fun. There were such deeper topics in this story that I didn't expect, and I loved that about it. Surge of trigger warnings for it. I adored how fun it was, but then at the same time, how deep it got. I rated it 4.25, and I feel like there are gonna be other books. Like, I think this may be a series. Don't quote me on it, because I'm not sure, or as my mom likes to say, don't write it down. It seemed like couples were being teased in this book, so I hope that it's a series, because I got really excited for the couples they were teasing. And if it becomes a series, I will be the first in line immediately. I need to read more Abby Jimenez. That's what I'm trying to say. This took me so long to read. It's a little embarrassing, but I read the Summer I Turned Pretty trilogy by Jenny Han. Um, listen. 
Most of y'all read these like in elementary school, middle school, what have you. I, however, only read fantasy. Like I only read fantasy or thrillers. That was it. I was not into romance whatsoever, which is crazy because now it's my favorite genre. So yeah, these, I had no interest in them whatsoever at the time, but then I started reading romance. And so of course I had to go back and read these. Of course, I had no other choice, especially because the show is coming out soon. Um, Pretty sure it's on Amazon and it's gonna, um, be a show yeah as i just said so obviously i had to read the books before i watched the show basically this is a trilogy and it is the summer i turned pretty that's the first one then it goes it's not summer without you that's the second one and then just to switch shit up we'll always have summer <laughs> dare i say it these are the perfect summer reads <laughs> Anyway, so this trilogy follows Belly, and basically every single summer, Belly and her family go to Cousins Beach. And in Cousins Beach, they stay at this house with her mom's best friend. And her mom's best friend happens to have some sons, two to be specific, and that is Jeremiah and Conrad. <laughs> Cute. So basically that's what these books are. You follow Belly throughout the summers and you follow her throughout her childhood um, and you see Conrad and you see Jeremiah. There is a love triangle so be aware of that but it wasn't an annoying love triangle I will say. Like yes the love triangle is between the brothers. It's Conrad, Jeremiah, and Belly but I wasn't upset about the love triangle. Most of the time it is not my favorite thing. It wasn't annoying, it just wasn't. Like I picked a team and I stayed there. I will not say whether I was happy or not with the ending because I don't want to give away who she ends up with, but I was team Conrad. It was just a fun summer read. Like whenever you just want fluff, whenever you want a cute YA book that you just don't have to think about too much, that is just the perfect escape, I think this trilogy is amazing for that. So the first book was definitely my favorite. I rated it 4.25. And then the other two, It's Not Summer Without You and We'll Always Have Summer, I rated it four star. The the only complaint I had about these was throughout the series, you get to know this character and you see how amazing they are. And then towards the end, they completely switch up, like completely. And it kind of seemed like the author was just trying to push one team on you and take away the other team. I'm not gonna explain that too deeply because like I said, if you haven't read this, I don't wanna spoil it for you, but it just felt like the character was not being that character. They, they've completely forgot who they were. It annoyed me, basically, okay? Like when there's a love triangle, I want the team to win not on a technicality. Like I want it to happen because the love is there. I don't want it to happen because this other person fucked up. You get me? And that's kind of how I felt about these, especially because the character wasn't like that at all until they were. <laughs> me trying to say this without giving anything away. <laughs> anyway, these are really cute. These are summer reads. For sure, read it whenever you want fluff. I'm very excited for the show, especially because I want the show to show us a little bit more because in the end, when everything was resolved, it was very quick and I didn't get to really enjoy it because it was so quick. I was like, what just happened? It's over? Like, give me something more, you know? So I hope the show gives us a little bit more, but I really, really liked these books. Definitely recommend. Then I was very clearly still in a YA mood because after the Semi Turned Pretty trilogy, I went into Better Than the Movies by Lynn Painter. And this is the best YA hands down. I don't wanna hear it. This book combines rom-com movies, romance novels, Taylor Swift, and all different tropes into one book. If you're a fan of any of that, you will love better than the movies. So this book follows Liz and Wes and you only get one POV, only Liz's. And she has lived next door to Wes for a very long time and they have had this rivalry since they were kids over this parking spot. And Liz has a crush on this boy that she can't seem to get very close to because none of her friends know him and she can never get to talk to him. And he was someone she knew from her past. But Wes happens to know this boy. So she decides that she's going to make a little deal with Wes. He can have the parking spot if he just helps her with this boy. So if he pretends to date her so that the boy will be interested and so that she can hang around this boy. And that is what they do. So you have fake dating, you have enemies to lovers, you have childhood rivals to lovers. And get this, at the beginning of every chapter, there is a quote from a rom-com. That is in every single chapter. At the very beginning, you get a rom-com quote goodbye. And Liz represents all of us because she's obsessed with music. She's obsessed with playlists. She's obsessed with Taylor Swift, romance novels, rom-coms. She romanticizes her life. She loves different tropes. That is all of us in a book. Come on now. And there's a lot of music throughout the book too, which is my favorite thing ever. Y'all know, playlists just get me. This book is just great. You wanna know my favorite quote from this book? I'll tell you. Enemies to lovers. It's our trope books, bum. Are you kidding? Goodbye. Anyway, this book is incredible. Please go read it. I read it at 4.75. The only reason why it wasn't a five, let me explain. The ending felt very rushed. I would have liked it a little bit more developed. I feel like a lot of books do that for me where I enjoy the buildup so much and I enjoy throughout the whole thing, but then the ending just goes by too fast. Like I need 
to know where the couple ended up. I need to know a little bit more about them. I need to see them happy. I need, I need all of that for me to be able to be like, oh, I'm content, you know? And I felt like I didn't get that with this one, but I adored it. It was amazing, 4.75. That is literally my only complaint. If you're a Swifty, you need this book. And you are a Swifty, because you can't not be. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. Next, I left my cute fluffy book phase and I went for something a little bit deeper. And that is Dear Ava by Ilza Madden Mills. This book looks very cute. Okay, look at the cover. It is adorable. But this book went way deeper than I thought it would. Way deeper. So it follows Knox. And get this, it's gonna sound crazy, but Ava, um, it is dual POV. So they go to the same high school and he is this hotshot quarterback and she is this girl that nobody really likes on his team because there was an incident that happened the year before. I will not spoil for you, but please search up trigger warnings. So something happened a year ago and the football team doesn't like Ava because of what happened and Ava does not like anybody on the football team. But now she comes back to school after the incident a year later and she starts receiving anonymous letters from one of the football players. And not only that, but she's also in the same class as Knox and they are assigned partners. I will not tell you anything else about this because I was shocked throughout the whole thing. It is definitely on the deeper side. It definitely has very heavy topics. I adored this book. It was beautiful. It was astonishing. It was amazing. The only thing with this was I felt like it was too heavy. I enjoy deeper topics, I do, but I felt like they just could not catch a break. Like. These two people, they just kept getting fucked up all the way. It wasn't just one thing, two things, three things, but no, it was back to back to back to back. And I just did not get any happiness. <laughs> like I needed some of that, you know? And for a book about letters, I didn't get enough letters either. Like if you're gonna call the book Dear Ava, and if in the bag it's literally gonna have a letter, I, I, I want some more letters, you know what I mean? If you're gonna have like five letters, come on now, I've been bamboozled. <laughs> But I loved this book. I rated it a 4.75. It just wasn't a full five star because of those two things I just said, but it was amazing. The ending was astonishing. The epilogue was to die for. It's just, I felt like they overdid it a little bit with all the trauma. It was just way too much. And I would have liked some more letters, but I loved Dear Ava. Please go read it. Definitely an underrated book. I will be reading some more by Ilza Madam Mills immediately. Then because I was thrown with so much deepness and trauma from Dear Ava, I went to the completely opposite direction and I went for French by Melanie. Melanie Harlow. <laughs> I adore Melanie Harlow. Her books are great for when you're in a slump. Like if you just want something that has smut, has some story, is super fun and easy to read, Melanie Harlow is the way to go. And that is why I always pick up her books. Every single month I read at least one Melanie Harlow book because it's the time where I'm like feeling a little bit down and I'm like, I need a little pick me up. Melanie Harlow. Frenched had the best plot I've ever seen in any book. Are you ready for this? It basically follows Mia and Mia is engaged and about to be married, but a week before she's gonna tie the knot, this man says, no, we can't get married anymore. I'm so sorry, I'm gonna go to Vegas. You, you deal with all of this by yourself. And Mia's like, what the fuck? So of course she goes through anger, she goes through sadness, she is hauled up in her bed, not wanting to leave, and her best friends convince her to go to Paris on her honeymoon, but by herself. And Mia does just that. She goes and she meets on her first night there, the hot bartender slash musician, Lucas. And he offers to be her tour guide while she's there. Do you need any more? Are you kidding? Goes to fucking Paris by herself and gets a wee wee man to give her a tour? of the whole city. And not only do they tour the whole city, but they have sex everywhere. <laughs> Y'all, this book was so smutty. Pick this up when you are just in the mood for some spice because it is so spicy. The plot, the idea of being, you know, in France by yourself with this hot guy touring you around, amazing, right? Mwah, mwah, mwah. We love to see it. But it is mostly just the spice because there is no more plot other than that. Like it is just the aesthetic and the spice. That's what made this book because it's in the span of a week. So it's definitely insta-love because, you know, she's only there for that certain amount of time for honeymoon. However, you do have two more books in this series. You have Forked and you have Floored and it's about her two best friends that I told you about in the beginning. So I'm guessing you're gonna get some of them. And also you have Taste by Melanie Harlow. That is the kid's book. Anyway, I rated it four. I really did enjoy this. Do it for the aesthetic, do it for the spice and you will be very content with Mia and Lucas. And then I went back to my Jenny Han kick and I read to all the boys I loved before trilogy. <laughs> I had never read these like I explained earlier because I wasn't a romance girly and I had never watched the movies either. So I thought it was perfect for me to read it and then watch the movies. And that's what I did this month. I read all three and then I watched all three. And let me just say, I loved both. I loved these books. I loved them so much. These and the Summer I Turned Pretty trilogy, comfort. But the movies were really good. Like I actually really liked it. Noah Centineo, I was about to say Centineo. <laughs> Noah Centineo as Peter Kavinsky, 
no arguments. He was great. Anyway, you guys know the story of these. It's basically Lara Jean and she has letters to all the boys she's ever loved. And there are five letters total, I think. One day they all get sent out. She didn't mean for them to, but they do. And her sister's boyfriend gets one because she used to be in love with him. And to avoid any awkwardness with her sister's boyfriend, she pretends she already has a man's. And that man's is Peter Kavinsky, the hotshot guy at school. Can this sticker get out? Oh my God, wait, this sticker, this sticker literally can get out. And I'm sitting here with the sticker on? How embarrassing. Hold on, you guys. I will not be embarrassed any longer. There's a sticker that says now on Netflix, but it's a removable sticker. And I was sitting here with it on. Insane. Ta-da. Me, I'm now a Netflix show. Anyway, y'all, I'm sure you've heard about these. If you haven't read the books, you'll probably watch the movie. I would highly recommend the books. The books are always better. They are 1000% better than the movies, but the movies were so cute. So the first book is To All the Boys I've Loved Before. I rated it 4.5. It was definitely my favorite in the series. I adored the vibes. I loved the scenes. One of my favorite scenes in this book is the Halloween scene. It had no business being so cute. Then PS I Still Love You, four stars. It wasn't as good as the first one. I still liked it. The reason why this one was a four star instead of a 4.5 like the first one was because Peter pissed me off 99% of the time. And then the last one, Always and Forever Lara Jean, I rated a 4.25. If you want something cute and fun and fluffy, to all the boys I loved before. And then I read Ivy by Will and Ash. Will and Ash is Daphne Perry's pen name. And every single month I have to read at least one Daphne Perry book. It's required of me because she's one of my favorite authors and I'm going through her entire backlist. This book, before I say anything, is in third person. I'm so sorry, but trust me, you don't really notice it. You don't because it is so good and you're intrigued the whole time. Picture Pretty Little Liars meets Gossip Girl, that's this book. Like look at the cover, it literally says, whisper your confessions in our ears, we promise not to tell. It's giving, got a secret, can you keep it? So Ivy is so different from Devney Perry's other books because it is not a small town romance. It is a darker college romance and it follows three different storylines. You have Ivy, you have Alora, and you have Cassia. Ivy and Alora have been best friends for years and they've lived together for a long time and Cassia just moves in. I will not tell you much more because it is so fun to see the secrets unfold in this book. Just know that there are three storylines, three love stories, okay? You do not only get one or two, you get three. You get brother's best friend, you get best friend's brother, you get a little bit of forbidden vibes. You have three chances to fall in love with a couple. I fell in love with all three, of course. Zayn and Alora are definitely my favorite couple, for sure. Even though something Alora does in this book really pissed me off, like angered me like no other. Most books piss me off at least once, so it's okay. If you like Gossip Girl, if you like Pretty Little Liars, read Ivy. I rated it a 4.5. This next one, I'm not going to be talking too much about because I didn't like it and therefore I don't remember much about it, but it is The Wrong Heart by Jennifer Hartman. I rated this book one star. My one stars are left for books I DNF, like two stars, I made it through the whole thing. I just didn't like it. I don't read a lot of book one star, but this one was it for me. I know a lot of people love this book. I just personally did not. I don't remember the characters' names, but I think it's dual POV. And basically this woman's husband dies and then she starts to talk to the guy who received his heart. That's basically the premise of this book. And I went into it knowing nothing. And although I knew there would be trauma, it just felt like way too much. Like it felt so overdone. And it felt like both of these characters were really relying on each other to survive, which I hate. Like the girl at least had some of a support system. He didn't have any. I just don't believe in somebody else saving you. Like I want you to save yourself and then somebody else to compliment you. I don't want somebody to be your whole life and the whole reason you exist. And I kind of felt that way about this couple. Even if that's not what the author was trying to do, I kind of felt that way. I don't know. There was just a lot of triggering topics. So if you're gonna read this, please search up trigger warnings like out the wazoo. Yeah, I didn't like it. And I hated the ending. I basically got to 70%, I think it was. And then I skimmed the rest. I read the epilogue fully and and it made me even more angry because it was one of those happy endings that wasn't a happy ending to me. Like it was a happy ending, but it was unnecessary as fuck. Like I, the whole book was just pain and it felt very forced. I don't know. I just didn't like it. The wrong heart, one star. And this is crazy because Lotus and Still Beating are both by Jennifer Hartman and they are some of my favorite books ever, but this one just didn't do it for me. And that's okay. The only codependency I allow is Lily and Lo. And that is because Lily and Lo went through hell and back together, okay, since they were little and they went to rehab and they went to therapy and they bettered themselves for themselves and for each other and for their family and stuff like that. That's a different story. I don't wanna hear it about Lilo, okay? What was I saying? Speaking of another book I didn't really like, The Hardest Fall by Ella Mays. This one was a two star? 
so that's good. It was a little bit better than the long heart, but it was still not good. This book follows Dylan and Zoe and it is dual POV. And basically they meet in college. They have several me cutes. They meet throughout a couple of different years and every single time things don't work out until they end up being roommates on his last year of college and on her junior year. And they become besties and it's a little friends to lovers. Um, nothing happened really. I made it through this whole book, I did, but I hated my life all of it. It was very boring, like nothing crazy happened. Like there's not a big reason why I didn't like it. It was just that it was boring and it, nothing occurred. I don't even remember their personalities. She babbled a lot, I can relate. You know that one scene from She's the Man? You know, you can never get a chick to shut up. <laughs> She's the Man remains the best rom-com to ever exist. It didn't hit, and I love LMAs. Marriage for One and To Hate Adam Connor. Go read those two. But this one, it's a pass for me, which is funny because it's a football book. It fumbled. <laughs> then I listened to the audiobook of this, and I would definitely recommend Real by Kennedy Ryan. I heard that the audiobook was amazing. And when you tell me an audiobook is amazing, I'm there immediately, yes, because I love audiobooks. So Real, I had to. And it was an experience, y'all. For sure, listen to the audiobook if you're gonna read this. The story is about Neva and Canon, and Neva is this actress and Canon's director. And he basically discovers her and casts her to be in his new movie. And what I loved the most about this book is it had Neva's point of view, it had Canon's point of view, but then it also had the movie they were working on and different scenes from that movie. So we got to see a lot of that. And it also had songs too. So if you're listening to the audiobook, they sing. Like I was listening, all of a sudden they started belting out some vocals. I was like, okay. It was very fucking good, y'all. It was art, like art in book form. It wasn't just a romance to me. Like it felt like a love story between Neva and Canon, of course, but then it felt like a love story to yourself and to art and to black history and Hollywood and film and just everything about it was art. That's how I can describe this book is it's just beautiful art. It also had lupus representation, which I adored seeing as well because I don't think I've seen it in a book before. Anyway, I rated it a 4.5. I adored it. I didn't fall in love with Neva and Canon as much as I fell in love with their story separately. Like Neva, I was obsessed with her, obsessed. And then Canon, obsessed. But then together, I just thought it was a very beautiful story of them, but I wasn't like, in love with the couple. So it wasn't a full five star, but 4.5 for sure. Definitely worth reading and maybe listen to the audiobook because it was astonishing. I will proceed to go through Kennedy Ryan's entire backlist. Mark my words. And I went back to my summer vibes and I read Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This book, y'all, is if you take People We Meet on Vacation, Love in Other Words, and The Summer I Turned Pretty, and you combine it, that's this book. If you like Love in Other Words, you would probably love it because it's exactly like it. It didn't quite reach that level for me. I still really enjoyed it, but Love in Other words remain superior. So this book follows Percy and you only get her POV and you get past and present. So you get to see past summers with her and now you get to see present. She and Sam were childhood best friends turned lovers, but then something happened 10 years ago that they never talked again. And now she goes back to the town where it all happened and she sees Sam again. It was literally that same energy as love in other words. Like just picture love in other words and that's this. It's just different characters. <laughs> I rated this a 4.5. It wasn't quite the five star that I wanted it to be and that I expected it to be because it had amazing buildup and I was so, so excited about this book. But then the conflict, I hated. I hated the conflict and I hate the way that it wrapped up way too quick. Like it was so fast. The ending felt incredibly rushed, but I still loved this book. It was very good, 4.5 stars. Like I said, if you liked any of the books I mentioned, you'll probably love it. There are a little bit of triggers in this book, not a lot, but search them up just in case. And you know what? One more summer book while we're at it, The Infinity Between Us by N.S. Perkins. Same vibe, same past present vibe of you seeing past summers and seeing now. Same thing with childhood best friends turned lovers and then something happens, they don't talk anymore. <laughs> All oh, these summer books have that plot. Am I just picking the exact same plots? Maybe I'm the problem. Anyway, this one is Violet and Will and you only get Violet's POV. Once again, something happens between them and they don't talk for many years. Theirs though is five years. And now Violet comes back to the summer house because she wants to sell it. But then when she walks in, she sees that Will is also there and Will does not want to sell it. So they strike this deal that if she stays with him this summer and helps him fix up the house and just stays hanging out with him, he can convince her to 
to keep the house. And she says, okay, I'll stay, but just because I want to sell it. I really enjoyed this. It was so cute. Like, and as Perkins first one was more trauma based than this one, like this one was lighter. It still had some deeper topics. So search of trigger warnings just in case. It was way lighter than her other book, A Risk on Forever. And I rated it four star. It got me in the mood for summer. It got me thinking I have a beach house and that I can just go and jump in the ocean and just swim amongst the stars with the fish. But then I remember that I don't live near a beach and that I can't in fact go to the ocean and that I'm scared of the ocean because we haven't even explored all of it. You know what I mean? What is out there that we don't know? A lot. And then what is out there that we do know? Sharks. It's nice to imagine though, four stars. The last two books I'm going to be talking about today, I left for last specifically because, well, they were the last two books I read this month, but also, because they're the best ones. They are the only five stars I had this month. So listen carefully because you're gonna read these. You're gonna wanna read it and you're gonna go and you're gonna do it. Finding 13 and Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh, Boys of Tommen series. Y'all, I will not leave you alone until you read these books. Now listen, they are thick. They are so thick. <laughs> they're like 800 pages each, but it is worth every second. Search of trigger warnings, I'm gonna tell you before I even start because these books are very heavy. These books are dual POV. It follows Johnny and it follows Shannon. I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. They are um, based in Ireland. So there are some Irish terms in these books that I thought I was nailing while I was reading. But then at the end, there's like a little glossary, glossary, dictionary, whatever. It tells you what the words mean and how to say it. And I was very wrong. I wasn't nailing it like I thought I was. Anyway, based in Ireland, Shannon and Johnny. Shannon goes to a new school because she was getting bullied in her other one. So she moves. And then on her first day to this new school, she is crossing a field. And then she gets hit in the head with a ball. The ball was thrown by Johnny. I am not going to tell you much about these because I went into them completely blind and it was the best decision I've ever made. But definitely search of trigger warnings and content warnings because these are very heavy. It's a lot. So make sure you're ready for these and they are long. So make sure you're ready for that too. And also this is a series. So you do get crumbs of other couples that are going to come. You do get a little bit of found family because you meet Johnny and Shannon and then you meet Johnny's best friend. <laughs> Johnny's best friend is my favorite. I'm looking forward to the, his book the most, Gypsy. And then you meet Shannon's best friend, Claire, and you meet her best friend, Lizzie. And then Johnny also has another best friend, Huey, who is Claire's brother. And then you get Shannon's brother, Joey, and his girlfriend, Iofi. So you have a lot. You meet a lot of characters and you get to know them so well. Like, I feel like I already know these characters like the back of my hand and I don't even have their books yet. I only have Johnny and Shannon's. This is one of the best series ever hands down. Please read Binding 13 and Keeping 13. You're going to fall in love with Johnny and Shannon. You're going to fall in love with every character in this book. And there's a lot to these. It's not just the romance. It's also about these characters and their struggles and their families and their friends. And it has everything. Go read these immediately. Highly recommend both five stars, infinite stars, if that's possible. I haven't even read anything after Binding 13 and Keeping 13 because I physically can't move on. I'm just there. Like my body is here. But my mind is in Ireland. Anyway, Shadi Bay, so these are all the books I read this month. I think that was 19. Let me know what you read. Let me know what your favorite book was this month. Let me know if you're gonna read any of these. And if you are gonna read any of these, I hope it's Binding 13 and Keeping 13. If it's not, I will be angry. I won't do anything about it, but I will be angry. <laughs> Bye, Shadi Bay, I love you.